Next up, let's take a look at Manage Identity and Access. Note the percentage of this part of the exam, 30 to 35%. This was a big change into the new version. Now, again, keep in mind, I'm recording this January 1st, Happy New Year, of 2021. This percentage is a little bit different on the current state exam objectives, but I am modifying this deck in particular to focus additionally on the newer perspectives. So if you don't get to the exam until the end of January, you're gonna have a bigger, heavier load on this section. Four major categories, manage Azure Active Directory identities, things about users and groups, service principles, pass-through authentication. Second major category, configure secure access using Azure Active Directory. You got to know PIM, access reviews, MFA, and AD identity protection really well. Category three, manage application access. Everything, everything about application registration, permission scopes, consent, and API access. And the fourth major category in this section is managing access control. In my opinion, if you know a little bit about identity, this is probably the easier part. And so I didn't cover much in the newer slides. There are some older slides hidden that will talk about resource group permissions, RBAC, roles, least privilege, checking access, things like that. Big, big part of the exam, if this is not your forte, you may in particular want to look at going into some of the uh, longer learning paths. But in my case, identity is my, my, my favorite areas. The Active Directory Domain Service stores passwords in the form of a hash value representation of the actual password. A hash value is a result of a one-way mathematical function, the hashing algorithm, and there's no method to revert the result of a one-way function to the plain text version of a password. To synchronize your password, Azure Active Directory Connect or Azure AD Connect Sync extracts your password hash from the on-premises Active Directory instance. Extra security processing is applied to the password hash before it's synchronized to the Azure Active Directory authentication service. Passwords are synchronized on a per-user basis and in chronological order. The first time you enable the password hash synchronization feature, it performs an initial synchronization of the passwords of all in-scope users. And again, you define this scope, whether it's all users or per OU or other searchable attributes. You cannot explicitly define a subset of user passwords that you want to synchronize. However, if there are multiple connectors, it is possible to disable password hash sync for some connectors, but not for others using the set dash AD sync AAD password sync configuration commandlet. When you change an on-premises password, the updated password is synchronized, most often in a matter of minutes. Password hash synchronization feature automatically retries failed synchronization attempts. If an error occurs during an attempt to synchronize a password, an error is logged in your event viewer. Azure Active Directory Azure AD pass-through authentication allows users to sign in to both on-premises and cloud-based applications using the same password. This feature is an alternative to Azure AD password hash synchronization, which provides the same benefit of cloud authentication to organizations. However, certain organizations wanting to enforce their on-premises Active Directory security and password policies can choose to use pass-through authentication instead or combine pass-through authentication with a seamless single sign-on feature. This way, when your users are accessing applications on their corporate machines inside your corporate network, they don't need to type in their passwords to sign in. Note that as a prerequisite for pass-through authentication to work, Users need to be provisioned into Azure AD from on-premises Active Directory using Azure AD Connect. Pass-through authentication does not apply to cloud-only users. Within the link for PTA on the slide, make sure to also review configuring high availability and also the smart lockout feature. Smart lockout in particular has a few checks and balances. The link that is at the bottom of the slide is for your study and convenience. For OAuth, there are several concepts you need to understand in the exam, such as the difference between admin and user consent and delegated versus application permissions. If you search for the article, Tutorials for Integrating SaaS Applications with Azure Active Directory, you can take a look at any one of those examples to see how to configure the app. Microsoft's passwordless authentication methods enable different scenarios. Consider the organizational needs, prerequisites, and the capabilities of each authentication method to select your passwordless authentication strategy. It is recommended that every organization use Windows 10 devices 
that use Windows Hello for Business. Then add either phone sign in with the Microsoft Authenticator app or security keys for additional scenarios. For configuring passwordless authentication on the exam preparation, make sure to review the required administrative rules and how to deploy with the Authenticator app and FIDO2 keys. In this decision tree, this is a great study chart for you to understand why one authentication flow would be chosen over another one. So pause this, review it if you're not familiar with it, and also look at the links related to this decision tree. Let's drill down a little bit more into OAuth because I think this is an area that unless you're deep in identity, you may not be as familiar with as other authentication methods like NTLM or SAML. By defining these types of permissions, the resource has fine grain access control over its data and how API functionality is exposed. A third party app can request these permissions from users and administrators who must approve the request before the app can access data or act on a user's behalf. An app most commonly requests these permissions by specifying the scopes and requests to the Microsoft Identity Platform authorized endpoint. However, certain high privileged permissions can only be granted through administrative consent and requested granted using the administrator consent endpoint. Using Azure Active Directory access reviews enables organizations to efficiently manage group memberships, access to enterprise applications, and role assignments. Users' access can be reviewed on a regular basis to make sure only the right people have continued access. Make sure to review this link to see all the steps that are involved in creating an access review. Azure Active Directory simplifies how enterprises manage access to groups and applications in Azure AD and other Microsoft online services with a feature called Azure AD Access Reviews. You can start the access review process from the notification email or by going directly to the site. Note that there could be delays in receiving emails and in some cases it could take up to 24 hours. Add Azure no reply at Microsoft.com to your safe recipients list to make sure that you are receiving all me emails. Review the link also in this slide for more steps in this process. As an administrator, you can create an access review of groups or applications and reviewers perform the access review. You can track the progress as the reviewers complete the reviews from the identity governance page. Make sure you know the ways that you can retrieve the results answer with a CSV file that can be viewed in Excel or other programs that open UTF-8 encoded CSV files. What if you remove a user from access review? Make sure you look at the link for that as well. Remove users from an access review. By default, a deleted user will remain deleted in Azure Active Directory for 30 days, during which time they can be restored by an administrator if necessary. After 30 days, that user is permanently deleted. In addition, using the Azure Active Directory portal, a global administrator can explicitly permanently delete a recently deleted user before that time period's reached. Once a user has been permanently deleted, subsequent data about that user will, will be removed from the active access reviews. Audit information about deleted users remains in the audit log. The Microsoft Identity Platform v2.0 endpoint supports authentication for different kinds of modern application architectures. All the architectures are based on the industry standard protocols OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect. By using the authentication libraries for Microsoft, tokens be, can be acquired from several types of applications, including web apps, mobile apps, desktop apps, and web APIs. Azure Role-Based Access Controls, or Azure RBAC, is the authorization system you use to manage access to Azure resources. To grant access, you assign roles to users, groups, service principles, or managed identities at a particular scope. Tokens can be acquired by apps running on devices that don't have a browser or are running on the Internet of Things, or IoT. Authentication scenario involves two activities. First, acquiring security tokens for a protected web API and protecting a web API or a web app. Security tokens can be acquired by multiple types of applications. These applications tend to be separated into the following three categories. Each is used with different libraries and objects. First are single page applications or SPA. These are web apps in which tokens are acquired by JavaScript or TypeScript app running in the browser. Many modern apps have a single page application at the front end that's primarily written in JavaScript. Public client applications. Apps in this category, like the following types, always sign in users. Desktop apps that call web APIs on behalf of signed in users, mobile apps, apps running on devices that don't have a browser, like those running on IoT devices. 
Finally, confidential client applications. Apps in this category include web apps that call a web API, web APIs that call a web API, and daemon apps even when implemented as a console service like a Linux daemon or a Windows service. Access to privileged Azure AD rules for employees changes over time. To reduce the risk associated with stale role assignments, you should regularly review access. You can use Azure Active Directory Privileged Identity Management, or PIM, to create access reviews to privileged Azure AD roles. You can also configure recurring access reviews that occur automatically. You can set the frequency setting from one time to weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, or semi-annually. Use a duration slider or text box to define how many days each review of the recurring series will be open for input from the reviewers. For example, the maximum duration that you can set for a monthly review is 27 days to avoid overlapping reviews. Use a directory switcher to go to your new directory. It can take several hours for everything to show up properly. If it seems to be taking too long, make sure you check the global subscription filter for the move subscription to make sure it's not simply hidden. Changing the subscription directory is a service level operation, so it doesn't affect subscription billing ownership. The account admin can still change the service admin from the account center. To delete the original directory, you must transfer the subscription billing ownership to an account admin. There are two types of managed identities. A system assigned managed identity is enabled directly on an Azure service instance. When the identity is enabled, Azure creates an identity for the instance in the Azure AD tenant that's trusted by the subscription of the instance. After the identity is created, the credentials are provisioned onto the instance. The life cycle of a system assigned identity is directly tied to the Azure service instance that it's enabled on. If the instance is deleted, Azure automatically cleans up the credentials and the identity in Azure AD. A user assigned managed identity is created as a standalone Azure resource. Through a create process, Azure creates an identity in the Azure AD tenant that's trusted by the subscription in use. After the identity is created, the identity can be assigned to one or more Azure service instances. The lifecycle of a user assigned identity is managed separately from the lifecycle of the Azure service instance to which it's assigned. Internally, managed identities are service principles of a special type, which are locked to only be used with Azure resources. When the managed identity is deleted, the corresponding service principle is automatically removed.